motion then is of CBCD for clarification po before the cross where, where Christ's righteousness righteous imputation was deferred what can we say about personal eschatology of the Old Testament well the Old Testament in terms of eschatology is Old Covenant and therefore not yet at the time of fulfillment the Old Testament was preparatory uh, you see this for example in Romans 1 17 to highlight the eschatological fulfillment of Jesus Christ John says in his prologue John 1 17 the law came by Moses but grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ now I've explained I think in another context the truth in the Johannine sense is not truth versus error because there was no error in Moses in terms of the old covenant uh, but what makes it truth in Christ that Moses was not is truth as fulfillment so there's the difference uh, the Old Testament I also mentioned this I think in explaining also Romans 3 uh, is promissory while the New Testament salvation is possession so uh, then there's a distinction between the two uh, not distinction that the Old Testament was not assured of salvation but their salvation is as promised in the case of the New Testament as realized as already possessed and makikita nga natin to sa wrath. Wrath before the cross was restrained. That's forbearance. Since the cross removed, it's consumed. Uh, those are two different things. Other questions? Justin from CBCM, since wrath is not God's attribute and wrath will serve only for sin, uh, one uh, is there a sin prior to creation and is God wrathful prior to sin well, sin, you know, well and sin there can be no wrath uh, because wrath is reaction to sin so if there is no sin what is there to be for God to be uh, in wrath uh, if only the triune God existed <clears throat> uh, the three persons there is eternal love we can talk of eternal love but there is no eternal wrath in the sense of eternity past. And in that sense, I will not look at wrath. I do not look at wrath as an attribute. Uh, is God wrath prior to sin? <laughs> no. Is there sin prior to creation? If you mean creation of the uh, earth. Uh, yes, there was satanic sin. But if you mean creation of all, even Satan as, uh, as an as a chief angel was himself created so before creation of all there was no sin unless you attribute sin to the only existence then which was God which would of course be uh, impossible to accept Jomar CLC Pateros as we represent God's character can we both wrathful can we both be wrathful and loving at the same time well, we cannot be wrathful. <laughs> uh, I'm saying that wrath, uh, because we are ourselves object of wrath. Uh, just like others. Remember, we come from the same lump according to Romans 9. So it's not for the preacher to be wrathful. He is there to preach about the wrath of God. Then we reflect the love of God through uh, sincere, biblical preaching of the gospel. But it's not for us to exercise wrath because we ourselves are sinners and therefore object of God's wrath only by grace saved from that wrath as much as any sinner in our congregation. So uh, uh, God's wrath is fearful enough. Sometimes the pastor's wrath is even more destructive. So I don't, uh, we don't want that. Uh, Joshua... Uh, if wrath is not an attribute of God, wouldn't it be a violation of His simplicity? Since from now till eternity, He is wrathful towards sin and in the lake of fire, people will experience it 
for eternity as well. No, it's uh, simplicity refers to the attributes of God, and so it will be a vicious circle to say that uh, the, His wrath being for eternity uh, is a violation of His simplicity, but I'm not including wrath among His uh, attributes. Uh, there are things that God has done since creation, like redemption, so His redemptive love is something of his activity and it will go on for eternity uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that we are violating the simplicity of God because we see his redemptive love in action only when he unraveled the covenant of grace no uh, there is no violation of God's simplicity understood as the unity of all his attributes in one uh, in one instance of his being Lito of Pangasinan How should we counsel those who feel unworthy participating in the Lord's Supper because of some misconduct? Well, first affirm everybody's unworthiness So nobody's worthy If you wait until you're worthy you will not come at all I, I think that's a song uh, You will not come at all But our worthiness is in Jesus Christ so if there is a person guilty of something and because of that he is deciding not to partake of the Lord's Supper, what he is saying is this, there is an offer of grace represented by the Lord's Supper and I'm refusing it because I intend to keep on my sin. I choose my sin over grace. That's what he is saying and he's sinning all the more by refusing the Lord's Supper which is, remember, a sacrament an offer of grace through representation and to reject that okay? kung dahil sa sin wala huwag dapat mag Lord's Supper wala na dapat Lord's Supper sa church dahil lahat tayo ay uh, we struggle well, we all struggle with sin but precisely there's the Lord's Supper is to refresh that our only platform of acceptance with God is what Jesus has done on the cross and to refuse that is to say very boldly may I ask may I say uh, uh, very boldly I don't want Christ I want my sin so that's adding more sin other questions let's take a break